Liberal Viewer presents. So there were a lot of things wrong with the Fox News coverage last week of Republican Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell's claim that he was the victim of a Watergate-style bugging, beginning with the way Fox News did its best to minimize the nasty things the McConnell campaign was caught saying in those recordings. For example, in the April 9th Fox News story for Megyn Kelly on America Live, which you can see at this link, no one ever mentioned the most despicable part of the recording, Mitch McConnell's team's plan to attack Ashley Judd if she ran for Senate in Kentucky using her past diagnosis of depression, claiming it made her, quote, emotionally unbalanced, unquote, and Fox News never showed Ashley Judd's statement in response, which MSNBC anchor Tamron Hall read on News Nation, airing at the same time that Megyn Kelly's show aired on Fox News, as you can see in this clip. She says this is yet another example of the politics of personal destruction that embody Mitch McConnell and are pervasive in Washington, D.C. We expect nothing less from Mitch McConnell and his camp than to take a personal struggle such as depression, which many Americans cope with on a daily basis, and turn it into a laughing matter. Hmm, now leaving out the Ashley Judd celebrity response just isn't like Fox News, which usually loves sensationalizing the celebrity angle, but the real Fox News bias in this coverage came when lawyer and Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly brought on other lawyers and Fox News contributors like Arthur Idala and Susan Estridge to give legal analysis, including an attack on their fellow members of the press at Mother Jones magazine for publishing this possibly illegally recorded campaign meeting, beginning with the ironic criticism from Arthur Idala in this clip. What about the responsibility of the magazine, Megyn? Their, their big comment is, is, it is our understanding that the tape was not the product of Watergate-style bugging operation. Shouldn't they want to know that? Shouldn't they want to know if they're relying on criminal activity to publish a, a story in their magazine? I mean, does, isn't there any integrity left? Like, mm -hmm. Is it okay to commit crimes to get stories? I don't think so. I can tell you, I know Roger Ailes isn't telling anybody at the Fox News Channel, yeah, don't worry, violate the law, just get the story, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I know that's, that, that's not the ethics of this company. <laughs> I'm surprised someone working for News Corp and Rupert Murdoch could claim with a straight face that breaking the law to get a story is outside the ethics of the company, given the recent stories about the British newspapers also owned by that company, but... The really bad legal analysis came from Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly, even after she claimed to have looked into the legal issue here. So, I mean, how about doing a little investigation as to where this tape came from before you go public? Well, and there is, we want to tell you that there is a difference legally that we've looked into in being the operation that decides to break right. this information and put it out there, as Mother Jones did, and then being another organization that reports on the story and uses right. excerpts of the tapes. That is, that is fine legally, the latter. The former, maybe not. We'll have to see. Hmm. Now, what Megyn Kelly said there with the two other lawyers nodding along fails to inform viewers about an important First Amendment protection that journalists get when they broadcast stories in the public interest, even if some of the information in those stories may have dubious origins, as NBC justice correspondent Pete Williams explained back on NBC's News Nation airing at that same time, which gave the accurate information in this clip. But let's assume it is a bug. Then the question is, uh, who made the recording, who leaked it, and then is there any legal liability for Mother Jones? Now, another part of the federal wiretap law would appear to say that anybody who discloses this knowing or having reason to know that it was illegally made may be violating the law, although I have to point out that in 2001, Tamron, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in a case with somewhat similar circumstances mm -hmm. that when it involves disclosure of a matter of public importance, the First Amendment shields any prosecution or legal liability for that person. And that's right. The Supreme Court decided back in 2001 that a radio station that broadcast newsworthy parts of an illegally recorded cell phone conversation between members of a local teachers union was protected by the First Amendment when no one at the radio station actually made the illegal recording because, quote, a stranger's illegal conduct does not suffice to remove the First Amendment shield from speech about a matter of public concern, unquote. And that was a case in which the recording was definitely illegal, which by the end of last week was looking less likely in the McConnell case, where it turned out that instead of a Watergate-style bugging, the campaign conversation was secretly recorded by someone listening at the door in the hallway, and, as even conservative legal scholar Oren Kerr pointed out in his Vala Conspiracy blogs on this issue last week, when people record conversations they can overhear from places they have a right to be, it's pretty questionable whether they can be prosecuted under either state or federal anti-eavesdropping laws, but none of that important information about the limits of anti-eavesdropping laws made it onto Fox News, again, even at the end of last week when Megyn Kelly purported to give viewers a primer on eavesdropping laws in this clip. A little bit for you about eavesdropping and recording private conversations under the law. Eavesdrop, 
means to overhear, record, or transmit any part of another's communication without the consent of at least one party to that conversation. Both federal law and Kentucky law require one party consent, meaning one may secretly tape record another, so long as at least one of the parties involved in the conversation consents to that recording. At the federal level, eavesdropping generally punishable by up to five years in prison and or a fine. In Kentucky, it's a class D felony punishable by one to five years in prison. Hmm, so nothing about how anti-eavesdropping laws may not apply to recording a conversation you overhear from a place you have a right to be, and in fact, instead of informing viewers about these important limits on the law, Megyn Kelly went on to try to expand the criminal liability to someone who supposedly just watched the recording take place based on no facts I could see other than the person being a Democrat, as you can see here. And as for Mr. Riley's claims so far through his attorney that he did not do the tape recording, that he was a witness, so it appears they're trying to tell us he was with the guy who did it, but he didn't do it himself, that may not exonerate him because it is a crime to divulge illegally obtained information. And so if, there, if Mr. Riley was there, saw it happen, and in any way participated in divulging it to Mother Jones, all facts that will come out in the coming investigation, uh, he could still be in criminal trouble. We shall see where this goes. <laughs> All facts that will come out in the investigation? That's a lot of speculation to try to find a way a Democrat might be guilty of a crime, especially given that the strongest evidence of criminality in this case may actually point to Republicans on Mitch McConnell's staff because this secret recording also caught several of McConnell's Senate staffers getting thanked for doing opposition research for the political campaign, even though they're supposedly government employees with no record of being paid out of campaign funds to do campaign work. You can see a detailed description of why using Senate staff to do unpaid campaign work is a crime on the Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington webpage here, but of course none of those damning details made it onto Fox News, which reported that part of the story like this. The Washington-based Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, or CRU, has asked the FBI and the Senate Ethics Watchdogs to probe whether this recorded conversation showed Senator McConnell making improper use of his Senate staff. The Senate Minority Leader's aides note that representatives from CRU and Mother Jones both attended a secret meeting of liberal activists in Washington in January, at which McConnell was named as a prime target of their concerted efforts. <laughs> So Fox News attacked the messenger without informing viewers about any of the details supporting the charge Republican Mitch McConnell used government paid staff to do unpaid campaign work. When you compare that report to the expansive attempts to classify as criminal both Mother Jones Magazine and those who secretly recorded Mitch McConnell's meeting, I think it's pretty clear that legal analysis on Fox News depends a lot more on who's a Republican and who's a Democrat than the actual law, but I want to know what you think. Is it more accurate to call what lawyers do on Fox News legal analysis or political spin? And regarding the legal issues with eavesdropping, should it be a crime for you to record a conversation you can overhear from a place you have a right to be? And should it be a crime for a magazine to publish newsworthy information that may have been illegally recorded by someone else? I, YouTube, you decide.